Welcome to RimWorld Suffering. You're probably wondering, Mr. Streamer, Raw1D2 Games, whatever you're called, wasn't the last series about suffering? This time, my friends, it isn't the colonists that I expect to suffer. I will be the one to suffer. This series is comprised of three things. A hard start that entirely depends on RNG. An extremely tough combat orientated mod pack and community suggestions. At the end of the video, I'll have links and a bit of discussion about the mod pack if you too are in the mood to begin to hate RimWorld. Let's begin. So first things first then, welcome to what is sure to be a lot of a lot of pain, a lot of suffering for myself here. A very difficult, but hopefully very, very fun and hopefully unique mod pack that we've got here. So before I dive into things, normally I obviously start with us basically in game or, or with a scenario ready, but I need to explain some things this time around because we've got a couple of mods here that change gameplay in such a way that we, we kind of need to discuss it. The first one is Igor Invader. So for those of you who haven't played or heard of Igor Invader, it is very similar to the wave-based survival mod that you might have seen me play on the channel. We have played a, a couple of series with that mod. The way it works is it sends raids every two to three days on average. When you defeat raids, you'll be rewarded. Conversely, though, if the raids kill any of your characters, they will gain reinforcements. So it's very much a high risk, high reward system. You have to be very careful about making sure you're killing enemies without losing any people of your own as well. So that is something to bear in mind. Now, the other big thing that Igor Invader does, and this is probably the most essential thing to mention, is double damage. So that's all double damage by all weapons, melee and ranged. So I assume that doesn't include animals, but I may be wrong on that. Say a hunting goes wrong and we get impaled by an elephant, that could happen. But what it means is we've got to be, you know, extremely careful, but it does go both ways. Enemies take double damage, we take double damage. The second mod, which I definitely need to cover, is a mod called You Do You. Now, my original idea for this series was to make it so that we could only use skills with characters that have a passion in that skill. So say, for example, only using people with a passion in plants to grow crops and harvest crops. The mod You Do You adds an, a kind of AI, for lack of a better word, to the work tab. So essentially the work tab is disabled and your characters, your colonists, will do whatever they enjoy. So whatever they've got a high passion in, whatever they are particularly skilled in, there's uh, a good breakdown on the Steam page, which again, I, I would definitely recommend taking a look at here. Um, but one of the things they've listed here is colonists want to do things they're good at doing. They don't want to do things they are bad at doing. They want to pursue their passions if they're in a good mood. They want to tidy up the environment that isn't pretty. And they want to rest if their health is low. So those are things to all bear in mind. And it will automatically assign them jobs based on these rules. You can override the system, which we will be doing for one of our characters. So we have full control over a single colonist. Everyone else for their work priorities. Now, everyone's setting their priorities. We can still draft them up. We can still force them to do certain work types as long as they are, you know, allowed to do it within this rule set. But without, outside of that, it will set the priorities up. So, you know, the numbers one through four of its own accord here. Now, the other final thing to mention is that we are beholden to RNG. I did discuss it slightly in the intro, but just to give you a bit more information on what that means. In the configurable maps mod in the terrain settings, I have set everything to random. I have actually tried to start this series before and I got wiped out in eight minutes because I started on a map in the corner of a map where we had nothing but mountains and quite a high water level. We had 12 tiles to grow crops and then a raid turned up and we basically, you know, we were screwed from that point. So I got very, very unlucky. That was probably the, the kind of one percentile of bad runs there. So I'm not too concerned about it potentially happening again. But that is worth bearing in mind that we may end up, you know, landing on the map that doesn't have much ore. Or we might get a good amount of ore, similarly for everything else here. So that is something to, uh, to, to really bear in mind that we have very little control over really what's going on in this series. And that's the whole point, to influence it how we can, especially the combat, with the focus being the combat, without us having, you know, be, like super micro. Anyway, I'm going to start on Blood and Dust for all those reasons I've talked about, rather than losing this fun or anything higher, simply because... We want to see a long-term series. The people in Discord voting on, on seeing a long-term series rather than something like the Jilp series where I designed it so that we would die, we would learn how things work, and we get a strategy and we come back with a new colony. 
people on Discord have basically said we want a long-term story where we can get attached to the characters and basically only have one colony throughout the series, which I agree with. I think that's obviously the best way to go about things here. We're going to start with the seed of desert or dessert. Uh, planet side is going to be slightly uh, one tick above tiny in this situation because I'm going to drop it down to 20%, but I am going to make it a bit more crowded so we get our factions in that we want to see. And here we are. Actually, this isn't a bad map generation, is it? This is quite nice. More or less, everything is connected via roads, with the exception of these guys over here. Expedition Post, White Crimson, whoever they are. We do have a couple of factions. Uh, so, obviously, these guys are both added by Rimsonal. These guys here were added to make Tribal Raiders a bit more threatening. These are the Grand Elders, and they have nothing but psychic powers, essentially. So, that should be quite a challenge. For the reasons I talked about before, I, I, I like the idea of starting, you know, maybe here. Where we've got, uh, we, we've got hills, but not mountains. Because if we start on a mountainous map and we happen to randomly get the highest mountain level generation, there'll be nowhere to move. Unless there is a world tile that runs through a mountain. At which point I may be convinced otherwise. Because that'd be quite fun. Oh, there is one right there. It's in a boreal forest though, so it's very, very cold. Um, is there any others a bit, a bit more south? Savannah. I don't think I've ever played in a savannah before, you know? That could be quite interesting. Okay, I might go for that one. It's mountainous. It's got a dirt path. But if we do get that random generation whereby, you know, we, we've got nothing but mountains, there'll be a clear cut path through the center. So we can always branch out from there. That sounds quite fun, actually. Yeah, let's go for that. So we are going to upset Bakersfield, uh, which I assume are these guys here. They're hostile anyway, so I don't really care. Fine. And of course, I have set us up a preset for our our attempt, for lack of better word. So one of the characters is returning from previous series. You don't have to have seen previous the, the previous series. Just know they are one child clone, that grown soldier. They are 14 years of age. Discord voted on me starting with a single child that was unarmed, which is the scenario. We are basically playing on... We're basically playing on naked brutality, except he's got clothes um, because he's 14. Uh, more to the point... I have to include two other colonists to get the storyteller to start. I could remove them, but the storyteller won't send raids or anything until we get two characters. We'd have to wait for Wanderers, which I don't mind doing. I did design, well, I say design, these are random characters that I renamed to gave a couple of skill points in here. Hefty and Safety. The only problem with starting as a single character is, of course, if they get injured, they'll want to bed rest and then they won't do their job because of their medical skill. So we do need to kind of start with two other characters when we're using the You Do You mod. We are also starting with Nag the Thrombo from previous series, just a returning character there. A Thrombo by itself won't really do a huge amount, especially if we haven't got anybody with an animal skill, but there we are. Let's get to work. God, I'm I'm terrified. I have no idea what I'm going to expect when we load into this map. <laughs> are we going to be able to find any resources at all? We might genuinely spawn where the resource setting is none. Oh, good lord. Well, here we are. Oh, wow, this is really, really weird, isn't it? I like it, but wow, it's weird. Um, shit, this is very strange. Okay, what are we going to do here then? So we've got a cave with some insects. I immediately want to go and wipe those out. Of course, we don't have any weapons. Um, it's a, oh, the, the, the elusive cave bison, my favorite. Oh, this is this is strange. Um, how are we going to do this then? So the glow stools there, they're edible, right? They are a food. Smells like a dirty, old dirty rag pulled from the stomach of rotting buffalo, but it tastes surprisingly good when cooked. Okay, we've got some food. It's not much, and the animals will definitely be beating us to it. We need to put a wall around this basically straight away. We don't have any wood, so we are going to need to get steel before we can even put down a stone cutting bench. <laughs> oh, wow, this is chaos. Okay, well, let's grow some crops then immediately. Now, one thing I did ask permission for the lovely people over at discord who voted on this mod pack and if you're not in the discord go join that because for future future mod packs i'm basically just going to go there and and basically pull some of the options you know i came up with the original idea but the people really helped me uh craft this into the monstrosity that it, that it is they did allow me the tilled soil mod at least so that the focus was on combat and less so on starving to death you know it didn't really matter that much if we got a cold snap nobody wants their combat based colony starving to death because you get unlucky shit well i say that we may already be a little bit unlucky here. I think we need to just put down nothing but rice in our starting zone, right? We also need to be very, very careful that our people don't go near the insects. So I think we immediately need a home area, an allowable area here. Um, maybe something akin to that. And any further out being a bit too dangerous. Can we fish in this water zone? 
No. <laughs> oh, we can. Oh, excellent. Okay. So, fishing zone size is set to 10. Just personal preference, really, from last series. Um, so, we actually do have a fishing zone. That's very, very, very fortunate. Okay. Let's go small fish. We've got something, but the problem is no one's got skill in animals, right? So now if we go on our characters and click the work tab, you can see what they are willing to do here. Are any of them up for fishing? Fishing, fishing. You are, but it's so low down. Oh god, 30%. This is obviously the work preference there, so they are very happy to do crafting. And they will do crafting first if there are crafting jobs available. Oh my god. And you want to be a doctor, a cook? Well... Let's see how we go here. Hefty, of course, is, is very happy to do construction there. And the other two are probably going to help out because they, they can't do anything else here. Except for you. One's being, a, one's being a bit of a dick in this situation. The only problem is Nag the Thrombo is going to need a lot of food. And there is very little food to go around. Right, let's get down our growing zones and let's set that all to... I think we've got to go rice. I really think we've got to go rice. And I think we need to find steel straight away here to build a barrier. Otherwise, all the wild animals are going to come in here to eat my crops. Okay, let's see what we can find. I'm liking that already. Safety has immediately gone to try and fish us up some some fishes. Now, bear in mind, we set this to small catch, which means that we're not going to get very much from this at all, to be honest with you. Um, you know, maybe enough food to get us through a couple of days. We also need to make sure that we're cooking it, because, of course, raw fish has a massively high food poisoning chance. So, if we, can we get like a... We can't even get a campfire. What am I talking about? There's no wood. <laughs> we know there's a road somewhere on the map. We spawned in a world that has... So I wouldn't be surprised if we dig to kind of like this area and we might find a road running north to south. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Foods? I guess I'll have to do it like that. So one has nothing to do right now. So I'm going to get him to just at least haul the fish that safety's getting. It does take a very, very... No! I need to kill that rat. Do you think we could, between three of them, melee attack a rat? I don't want to immediately get an infection and die, though. That would be that would be horrible. So we have to be very, very careful. My God, we've got like a mega sloth. We've got squirrels, a whole herd of bison. There's a block missing there. You see that? Look. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right, right, right. Hefty, stop there. Show me the open road, brother. This is it. Freedom. Sweet, sweet freedom. Shit. <laughs> oh, look there, though. A chem fuel pond. Hey, that was convenient. And you know what? Look, there's another empty block there, too. Move on. What have you got for me? There's another empty block there. What the fuck is going on? Is this our road? What's that noise? There's combat. What's the combat? Oh, I thought it was combat anyway. Maybe I'm maybe I'm misunderstanding something there. I've got to keep an eye on these bugs. That's what's really worrying me about this area. Look, we've got another open area. This is really weird. Go, go hefty. Go hefty. Find me a way through. Hey, that's better. And there's another open area there. This is so strange. I love it. Okay. We may have found a good place to put down our base. Forget about the crops then for a second. Let's see where we end up. We've got down here. Oh my god, this is gonna go on forever, isn't it? Hey, that this one looks like a big reveal. What have we got? Another cave with another. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> We're gonna be here forever. Come on, Hefty. Oh, the rest of the map. I love it. Oh, there we go. Oh, look at this. Paradise, huh? We've got self a steam geezer. We've got uh, oh, no fishing areas. That's unfortunate. Again, more insects, but I'm not too concerned. There is a, a fishing area there. Oh, this is so much better. Boys, we're home. Abandon. Oh, shit. There was a scarab coming down there. You see that? Nag the thrombo. Join me, my friend. Let's go set ourselves up a, an allowed area here then. And let me go and remove everything else. That was so, so, so fortunate. Wow. I've never seen anything like that. That's so bizarre. Look at this. Trees and open field, Ned. I love it. Right, let's get some trees chopped down then. This is fantastic. We've got a game changer right here. I really want to secure this pond so that we've got somewhere to fish. And we've got another little area up here. Now, we want to block this up. But raiders, when we get raids turning up, you know, if they spawn in on the map edge, first they've got to deal with the insects. Secondly, they have to come all the way down here. So we've got plenty of warning for, well, for, for if they turn up, basically. Now, if we're also very sensible and we block this area off here, we're forcing them down through these insects as well. So we'd have to, we'd have to block this whole area up. And obviously, it would be quite dangerous with them being right there. But it could work really, really well in our favor. Look, there's another gap there. Makes me wonder what's on the other side. I almost don't want to open it up, especially like areas down here too. I think purely in the interest of keeping our people happy and and alive, I'm going to set nothing but recreation. If it's not essential to their survival, I'm not going to make them work, you know? We've got, oh, we've got agave, but it's not very good. 
51% grown. We could eat it. I don't want to risk it right now. We've got berry bushes that unfortunately aren't grown quite yet, but they're getting there. Oh, is that just a regular bush though? Damn, that's a shame. We're on the savannah, of course. As I look around the map, I'm seeing lots of gold. You know, lots of gold, lots of jade, lots of silver, uh, lots of uranium. I don't know if you guys have noticed it as well. Plenty of precious resources, absolutely no steel, which is a bit of a concern. There's also a bridge there. Oh, this is the road. Oh, you moron. Look, 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 we can see it in hindsight. This is the road. It runs through here, through this mountain. And that's why there's a bridge there. Ooh. You, well, you guys can see it yourself if you want to play this map. And look, you see it runs up through here as well. So through there, if we mine that out, will be another way NPCs can come down. Oh, cool. Hey, that was super, super lucky. I'm a big fan of this map. This is very, very cool. We've got our own little offshoot here running down by the main road. Fantastic. We need to get some crops down, though, like... like Pretty much right now, if you don't mind, because we are on the verge of starving to death unless we can secure that, uh, unless we can secure that pond, which I'm not feeling particularly optimistic. We could send the Thrumbo in. He might do some, some good damage. Oh, no. I didn't even consider that. What can we grow? We can grow rice. Is that it? We can't grow strawberries or tomatoes. What I wanted to do is grow a crop that we can eat raw in case that our, our cook isn't able to cook say for example we're assigned one to cooking now one as i said i would give us full control over one as, as kind of our avatar so to speak so this one we can set up to do whatever we want double passion and everything means it's a very powerful asset but if anything happens to one downed with something trivial like you know kind of muscle parasites um can't cook enough to keep up with the food demand i want to be able to grow some sort of crop they could eat raw but i don't think we've got oh we can grow pepper hey that's good okay we go i mean it's not it's not good don't get me wrong but it's better than nothing uh pepper eggplant yeah, so we're not doing too bad. I mean, pumpkin plants are, are not ideal at all, are they? I mean, cabbage, you can eat raw cabbage. Wouldn't recommend it. Agave, classic. Yeah, that's a good one, actually. It's been a hefty bitch right now and won't help me with, with anything. I suppose we could get hefty to start putting down growing zones, right? Oh, not growing zones, sorry, but tilled soil. So we have everything from here to up there. That's fine. Let's quickly get down some uh, floors. Thank you. I hate to say it, but I think we're going to starve to death if we stay here for too long. I, I might have to send... <laughs> this is so stupid. I might have to send back somebody to fish. You know, safety or, or whoever. Just to go and get us, well, something we can eat. Anything at all at this point would be would be preferable. Oh, no, you're lying. You don't... No, stop it. Just eat some grass, damn it. So she had food poisoning because during her breakdown there, she went and ate a fish. Um... On the plus side, though, it does mean that it gives us something to go and grab in the future. I'm hoping that the insects will attack an elephant, a mega sloth, something like that, wipe it out. Um, or it will wipe them out more specifically. If we've got any, like, mushrooms nearby that we could harvest, I'm uh, skeptical, but I guess we could... No, it's too close. There's only two insects right now, but we have no weapons. And don't forget, we received double damage. And I think, to be honest, trying to fist fight a mega spider is going to do more damage to us than it is going to do to to it. Okay, I've, I've already found a method of kind of metagaming it a little bit. So safety started to sow rice. So by forbidding the area, waiting for her to go and fish, I can now unforbid this, get our guys to, or, or at least one, to sow it while safety goes off and fishes. I can also get one to fish. I feel like we need to stick to... I, I feel like we need to stick to just getting the farms finished first and then go fishing after that, right? Let's go harvesting, growing top priority then. Obviously, plant casting too, by extent. I think it's 95% food poisoning chance with... Oh, empty! With raw fish. So this is going to be dangerous. Where are you? One. Oh, you're eating the, you're eating the raw fish. Fine, fine, fine. That's not enough. You're going to have to fish now. No, no, no. I don't think you understand. Hefty is going to die in here, Imperial. Shit, shit, shit. No, you don't. Don't you die on me, old man. Don't you die on me. How, how is he doing? What's What are we up to? 66%. That's okay. 66% is no no real concern. Uh, Okay, okay. Rescue Hefty. No, no, no. Medical. Rescue Hefty. No, you're misunderstanding me. Cannot reach. Is it not inside the allowed area? Yes. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Of course it would be two blocks out. Right, put the Hefty down. Feed the Hefty. Consume. Okay, how are you feeling? Better. It, it's a start. You need to just sit and fish, brother. No, 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 no. I don't even understand. You need to fish. We are going to die. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't want beer. I don't want fucking beer. One, you need to come back. Summon cotton plant. I thought I forbid it. Oh, damn it. I forbid the wrong bloody crop. 
Right, sorry, my bad, cancel. You need to go and feed Hefty anyway. God, now I know why he's bloody called that. Okay, have the entry. Even that squirrel's down from lack of food. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> oh, fuck, it's all going wrong so quickly. I tried. I was, like, on it at all times. They have not stopped fishing. Shit, my mistake was was trying to find somewhere to live rather than eating raw fish. And it's rare that you would you would ne necessarily need to even say that. Um, you get to, how much food have you got? Nothing, you haven't got any food. The next fish goes to, goes to one. Get over here. I'm talking about this food right there. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Look, he's never been more well fed. Safety, consume hefty. That's where we also don't have to bury him. <laughs> Is that clean off? <laughs> Leave him for the squirrels, boys. <laughs> it couldn't be any worse. Look at these mood debuffs to start things off. I'll just go and eat him again. It doesn't matter. You're already at critical break. You might as well just go and have a little bit more, a little bit more hefty. <laughs> hefty has been eaten by safety. What a stunning beginning to our Rimworld adventures. Wow. And how much rice have we got? Barely anything. The rice is almost grown. All you to, I mean, the, the tiny little bit that we've actually got down there. Wow. Um, one, can I get you to sow this area? I mean, it's going to break, most likely. Um, we might as well just accept it and move on. Oh, okay. All go back to sleep. That's probably not a terrible idea for the time being, but we do need to get some... Uh, we do need to get some crops down pretty much right now. Hmm... No, I, I mean, I'm thinking, uh, I'll let you guys pick the name. I'll let you guys pick the name. Uh, we do have renamed Colony, but for now, as a temporary placeholder name, I'm going to go for, uh, Cannibal, Cannibal Emergency, Cannibal Emergency. Uh, give the settlement a name. How about just, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Which was, uh, coincidentally the last thing, uh, Hefty said before he was eaten. Wildman. Lance the Wildman. Uh, that's assuming he gets very far. We might want to... Oh, what's he got? Intellectual and social. Uh, bearing in mind, again, because of the, uh, because of the you do you mod, this guy is gonna want to do social. He could be a great prison warden, and if he's not doing that, he wants to uh, uh, research. I mean, this is a great guy. But the issue is... Uh, safety has three animals from her fishing days. That rat just ate my bloody goldfish. <laughs> Equip goldfish's sidearm. Yes. Please tell me I can dual wield goldfish. Equip. Uh, not configured as a secondary weapon in mod options. Now look, you can definitely have a fish in each hand. I've had a fish in each hand. Disappointed to say that fish are not a valid weapon option in, uh, in the dual wielding mod. So as a result, I'm now going to go and thumbs that down on the Steam Workshop. Look. Look, we've got 18 rice and whatever he's using as a weapon. A herring. That's enough for a meal. That's 100% enough for a meal. Give me a campfire. Give me a campfire. Let's put it right there. Actually, have we got any more stone? Stone would be better to cook on than dirt. But either way, we're probably going to get food poisoning. It's better than the fish, though. Stop. Not pro... Oh, right, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, hefty. If only you were here now. Right, okay. Cook simple meal. Do forever. Do forever. And then we're just going to say cooking is obviously top priority here. Go. Brother. You all doubted me. And we have a single meal. <laughs> Wait. Hold on. Oh, God. He's got to run all the way back. Just drop the herring. Just use the herring, you weird man. To be honest, Psychotic Wandering is, is fine. Probably one of the best mental breaks we could get. But it comes with a caveat that he may psychotically wander into the mega spider in the spell of pizza. We need to be very, very careful about where he goes here. But it, it to me, just seems free catharsis right now. Especially as he's going to kind of sleep it off. I wish he'd got more fucking rice grown though, brother. What's safety up to right now? Oh, fishing again. Oh, <laughs> surrounded by vomit. Are they all right about the cannibalism? She is in a great fucking mood to say that she only recently ate all of her friend entirely. Here it is. A big day, my friends. The first... I, I'm not really proper harvest. Let's not call it that. But the first day we can actually have meals that haven't come uh, off off of a floor in a cave. Um, or were a rat or were their friend. Safety can also cook. Can you cook safely, though? Uh, skill level three. And they like it. 
Oh, she's all right with doing that because they've got low food. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's kind of a cool idea. So there's also an incentive to make sure you haven't got low food. Otherwise, you might get people desperate for food, cooking meals who are bad at it, giving everyone food poisoning. Man, this is quite a nifty mod. They've got a lot of different rules here that I never considered. People are happy. They're genuinely pretty fucking happy. I won't lie. Look at their moods. This is incredible. I'm actually blown away. Right, you start working on uh, some of the other crops. I've got them both forced working on the crops right now. Again, we can't set priorities, but I can force her to work if it's something that she's happy to do anyway. Um, which I assume she's happy to do simply because... Actually, I don't know. Why are you happy to do that? Plant cutter? I wonder if that counts because of low food. So I imagine as we get more food, she's not going to be interested in, uh, in, in doing that. Oh my god, even simple beds need cloth. What about a slab bed made of... Nope, you need to use stones for that. Okay. Operating table. Uh, we haven't seen any steel at all, so that's also off the menu. Shit, I mean, a bed roll is probably... But even then, if you can make a bloody bed roll, you can make a... Uh, you could just make a regular br uh, bed at that point, right? How are we doing on the cotton? So some of it's already grown. Whether or not we'll get enough... Bear in mind that their, their harvesting skills right now are garbage. So I've much doubt we're going to get enough cotton to even build a single bed at this point. How much wood have we got? Have we got enough to put down a structure of some description? 215. I guess that's something, right? Now we've got a consistent rice harvest down. I think we can probably set them up a good schedule, right? I think we can probably just go, you know, work for 5 a.m. till 3 p.m. That's a bit of a bizarre one. Let's give them, uh, let's give them eight hours of sleep kind of mandatory around the same time so they're not waking each other up too. Uh, let's do something like, <laughs> what am I doing? Getting them up at 3 a.m. What, what am I talking about? Right, let's do something like, like that. Oh, that's nine hours of sleep. That's way too generous. Right, take another hour away. Get them working during the daytime. A little bit of recreation in the evening and in the morning. They can either use that as recreation or use it for more sleep. Kind of your go-to schedule there. And let's get them working on a little kind of living zone. There's barely going to be enough wood for this. So if we want to if, if we want to use wood as a building material in the future, we're going to need to put down some sort of some sort of tree farm eventually. Can we chop these for wood? We can get a couple from there. Uh, we've got that one. Yes, that one's fine as well. And then we've got a couple of trees up here too. Excellent. Uh, what, what brush have I got selected? Because that was like not selecting those there for a second. Okay, so that'll do... Hopefully... I mean, I would love to get floors down. I would probably use concrete for it if we had access to any fucking steel at all. But the game's decided I don't deserve steel this run. One of the big balancing mechanics that I've added here because we've got some high-tech mods. Originally, the, the, the mod pack I built was going to be limited to... Uh, pre-spacer tech only, so everything spacer arco tech would be removed from the mod. Problem with that is, of course, you lose access to the Empire, you lose access to a lot of the vanilla expanded suite as well, spacer furniture, medical modules, a lot of the weapons packs they've got. I decided to actually go the opposite direction with it, and add in a bunch of technology, a bunch of weapon mods, you know, we've got Rinsel in here as well, and just go balls to the wall with combat variety. I think we've got genuinely about a dozen mods in this mod pack that are specifically just adding new weapons into the mix. So as a result, and the thing I was getting onto, I, I actually ended up adding the Empires mod. So uh, the developer of the Empire mod has actually been keeping me updated over Discord. We chat occasionally about it. Um, and, and it seems like it's been... Obviously, I had a huge amount of work putting it since we last played, but it's, it's obviously quite nicely balanced too. For a combat situation, it also makes a lot of sense in this mod pack because there are, you know, settlement defense. You can call them in as backup, as as, as combat backup too. So there's a lot going on uh, that, that ties it in very, very nicely into this mod pack, and it's a nice excuse to play Empire again because I actually really like the mod. So let's go ahead and create our player faction. So I need a name for this as well. Um, <laughs> I forgot about that. Um, actually, you know what? We'll forget about that. We'll do that tomorrow. Um, so for today, I need names for our, our faction for a start, and of course the settlement name as well. Then tomorrow we'll, uh, take suggestions for, on tomorrow's episode, that is not this episode, we'll take suggestions for the faction. Obviously we can't set up the faction yet anyway, because we don't have any silver or anything to settle with. Um, so that'll be something for the future, but I'm, I'm actually cautiously optimistic for this run. We've ended up in a nice area. We've got a nice map to work with. It's a weird map. I will admit it's mostly caves, so infestation is going to be a real pain in the ass. But it's a nice map to work with. We've got a nice little defensible area. And we'll see how we do. I'm dreading it. We've already lost a... 33% th th of all colonists have died. It's so far. 
That's not good. The only way we can go from that is up. So there's a good reason to be optimistic. And then, thank you all for watching. What I'm going to do now is quickly do a kind of mod pack overview. Now, I'm not going to be doing an installation guide on this video because I've done it quite literally every single series for the past dozen series that we've that we've had a mod list. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a separate how to install Rimworld mod packs using Mod Manager video, and I'll just throw that in as a link to all these videos instead. That way, we can spend a little bit more time discussing this particular mod pack, less on installation, which I've covered a dozen times before and I'm actually kind of sick of. So for those of you who are just here for gameplay, thank you. Uh, but, you know, if you want to stick around so I can actually explain some of the things we've got going on, that would be probably a benefit for the rest of the series. Things of note for the mods. I'm going to keep this as brief as possible because we've got a lot of mods here and I want to quickly sum it up. So to make it up the core of our combat, we have dual wield, simple sidearm, CEO's combat. We have uh, acting, I guess, to some extent as well. Defensive positions. We have um, run and gun. Those are kind of your essential combat systems we've got going on here as well. We've got Rimmerfella and Empire to help contribute to our resource generation to make up for the fact that we have a lot of mods that add end game weapon content. As I said before, I wasn't orig originally going to have anything post space attack, but I kind of went the opposite direction and threw in a load of weapons that um, I just thought would be fun and add a little bit of variety and kind of add to the, you know, the dynamic of uh, the, the dynamics plural of the mod pack here. So we've also got things like, um, you know, death rattle to contribute to the combat. We've got things like the anima gear and the elders faction again to give a bit more variation. Of course, the full vanilla expanded suite, which takes up about a third of the bloody mod list by itself. Besides that, a lot of it though, everything past, I would say here, everything past, actually everything past here is just tweaks. It's just all base game tweaks. You know, Dox World for reorganizing things. My Little Planet for allowing us to play on a smaller world. So none of these add anything new, more fixed things. And then everything above kind of here are the, the new stuff. So we've got Gun Nut and again, Rimsonal, Vanilla Expanded. We've got some Psychic Powers. And really, it's quite a slim mod pack in that regard. Uh, it's, it's all kind of stuff that we've seen before. But I think all combines into a nice experience and i'm quite excited to 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 see what the end game has in store for us with all this crazy weapon variety we've got going on I have saved this as suffering so i'll make sure that this goes on the workshop along with the collection so you guys can quickly subscribe to and download the whole thing as i said i won't be doing an install guide for this one i'll do a separate video and then i'll link all of them back to that install guide instead just to save me an incredible amount of time and effort and and save me a headache from that as well so stay tuned for that of course if you are not in this video like i said but stay tuned for that in the future if you do need any help with installation or you can alternatively watch any literally any first episode of remote that i've put out where i generally install an install guide in or I generally have an install guide in all of those thank you all for watching this is going to be stress. I can see that when the raids start coming in, we're still actually relatively safe right now. Besides the fact that we've started Death Nat to eat one third of our colonists, we are in a relatively safe place. When the raids start coming in, that's when we can start to panic. Thank you to Zaka, Nick Danger, 013, Chaos Undying, K, Queen Bav Morda, Siala, Dranmir, Crow Skull, Justin Rules, Out of All Context, Avion Prime, Felpy, Amore, The Fox, Thick, Quack, 62, <laughs> Nikki Sticks, Poseidon Sin, Tom Page, and Jack Blackshoot for their support at the executive producer tiers over on Patreon. We'll be updating the executive list starting tomorrow because we've just hit the end of that one. So if you're not on there, stay tuned for that. And a thank you as well to Anna Aurora, Lady Cerulean, Matteo, Noxon Mortellus, Smirt One, Struck Iron, Mr. Awesome, Callum James 3, Roger Wilco, Bare Minimum Cass, Lilac, and Thanks for the loan, Bojo. I'll also be resetting that list as well, just for reference. So send me your names on Patreon if you have not yet already, and I'll get those added on ready for tomorrow. See you all there.